One American town looks like any other when you see it from an airplane window. Trees line the quiet residential streets, and there's usually a highway running through to an industrial area where many town people work. But in every town, you'll find houses like this, run down, neglected. Trash and litter disfigure the house and yard. An eyesore, yes, and as you'll see, much more. A house that's neglected is the house that may be doomed in the atomic age. What would happen to such a town if it were on the outer fringe of an attack directed at a nearby city? We can answer that question, in part at least, even though it hasn't happened yet. A series of civil defense tests were made to discover the effects of atomic heat on American homes. I am going to show you how protective measures can help guard your home against the heat effects of an atomic explosion. This is the Nevada Proving Ground, where tests were made on miniature houses in various stages of upkeep, inside and out. These tests were also made on common fire hazards, like dead grass, old leaves, discarded newspapers, and fence structures. Here are five fences placed far enough from the explosion that they could survive the blast. The fences in the middle are built of decayed wood. Dry grass and litter simulate conditions you've seen in too many alleys and backyards in slum areas. The trash, litter, and dead grass are perfect kindling for the unprotected and unpainted wood of the fence itself. The moments tick away as we await the bomb and the fireball. light flash and the heat or thermal wave, then the blast wave. You remember the three middle fences are built of rotten wood, unpainted and surrounded by trash. They are immediately ignited. The two outer fences, without litter, are slower to ignite. Decayed, combustible wood surfaces like these fences are readily ignited by heat flash. Likewise, some types of interiors are easily ignited. This will be demonstrated in the next test. Here are two miniature frame houses, identical in structure, both in good condition and well painted outside. Sturdily mounted cameras in front of the houses are to record the effect of heat flash. Large windows purposely expose the interiors to the flash. In the house on the right, all the earmarks of untidy housekeeping. Newspapers and magazines lying about. And cluttered tables. Now the house on the left, identical to the other, but spick and span. Trash has been thrown away. Tabletops are tidy. Two homes, one a fire trap, even under ordinary conditions. The other cleaned up and fresh with better, safer housekeeping. Both ready for the test bomb. The light flash and the heat wave, then the blast tears away part of each roof. Let's see it again in stop motion. First, the light flash and the thermal or heat wave that only chars the painted outer surface of both houses. Then the blast. The cluttered room of the house on the right bursts into flame. In a few moments, the interior is completely ablaze. The fire that started inside spreads rapidly to the house itself, although the house on the left still shows no exterior flames. Now the house on the right burns as fiercely as if it had been deliberately fired with kindling. The lack of fire-safe housekeeping has doomed this house to destruction. In the other house, with its better, safer housekeeping, readily extinguished afterward. Damage? Yes. But the house still stands. One house standing, one house leveled, 
both painted and cleaned up outside. Identical houses, except for inside conditions and housekeeping. Now, our third test. Three identical miniature frame houses, each with varying exterior conditions, all the same distance from the point of the explosion. The house on the right, an eyesore. But you've seen these same conditions in your own hometown. Old, unpainted wood. And look at the paper, leaves, and trash in the yard. In a moment, you'll see the results of atomic heat flash on this house. The house in the middle, in good condition, with a clean, unlittered yard. The exterior has been painted with ordinary, good quality house paint. Light painted surfaces reflect heat, and the paint also protects the wood from weathering and moisture damage. Let's watch the test now and see what happens under atomic heat. on the right. Notice how the heat wave affects it. There's the fire starting in the trash surrounding the house. Now it spreads to the house itself. In a moment the blast wave and here it comes. is the first to ignite. The trash serves as kindling for the dry, weathered wood. The house on the left smolders for a few moments. Looks almost as if it will not burn, and then bursts into flame. The house on the right continues to burn. Two houses are a total loss, but the well-kept and painted house in the middle still stands. Which of these is your house? This one? The house on the right, dilapidated with paper, dead grass, litter everywhere. The house in the middle, cleaned up, painted up and fixed up, exposed to the same searing atomic heat wave, did not catch fire. Close examination revealed only a slight charring of the painted outer surface. in the middle survived an atomic heat flash. These civil defense tests have proven how important upkeep is to our houses and towns. Now it's up to us the people to take decisive action. All right, you say, what can I do about it? What can my community do? All over America, towns and cities are organizing local cleanup, paint up, fix up campaigns. You know the story. Join up with your friends and neighbors for a better, safer community. It's also good civil defense, which is everyone's responsibility. The dingy house on the left, the dirty and littered house on the right, or the clean white house in the middle. It is your choice. The reward may be survival.